morning um, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Xavier de Molera and I'm leading the R&D Transfection Group uh, based in Carlsbad in California. And today I want to talk about a new solutions and new work that we've done around new viral and non-viral platforms for T-cell engineering. So uh, the first part of the talk will focus a little bit more on lentiviral solutions and then, then it will talk about the next generations and um, the use of tools such as gene editing uh, and electroporation. So really uh, in Thermo Fisher we are committed to provide platform for viral vectors. There is a need to really be able to produce a lot of viruses for the cell and gene therapy industry. Right now it's very expensive um, and not efficient and there's a need to really have better solutions to really make cell and gene therapy available for everybody. Uh, the current commercial manufacturing process is unfit and uh, there's a growing demand. The process must maintain biological activity, stable transgene expressions and prevent transmissions. So really we, we need to develop platform that enable efficient and inexpensive upstream and downstream process of biological active viral vectors for large scale manufacturing. And that's really a commitment at Thermo Fisher. So specifically in the field of gene modified T cell therapy, it's actually a quite a bit complex manufacturing process. It's not like using small molecules or antibodies. What, the, the therapy is actually a cell. And because it's a cell, it's quite complicated to manufacture. And the process of T cells modified therapy is first you need to take blood from the patients. Um, there's a selection process when you need to select the T cells, separate the T cells from the blood cells, and then there's a need to activate and gene transfer those T cells. You need to genetically engineer those T cells so you could target, so you could design T cells that can target cancer cells and kill them. Um, and then there's a step when you need to expand the T cells in large quantity to then inject back in the patients. So you see there's a lot of steps, a lot of complicated steps, and everything has to be uh, efficient and, and really uh, clean. And so the way we look at this at Thermo Fisher is we, we look at this workflow of T cell manufacturing. So the first step, there's a cell act isolation and activations. Then you want to engineer the cells. And, and so typically you would use lentiviral productions or electroporations. There's an expansion cells, and we have a lot of solutions here, such as media, human serum replacements, growth factors, and single use technology. And I will talk about it a little bit. And then there's wash, fill, finish, cryo. At the end, when you prepare the cells, you need to prepare an aliquot into a tubes. And then finally, there's a lot of lot release and characterizations. All along the process of cell therapy, you must characterize the cells. You must make sure it's the right cells, the right identity. There's no impurity uh, and it's clean. So really in the next few slides, I want to tell you a little bit about our product. Uh, and what we have in this field. So I won't talk about everything, but we had a lot of offering in cell therapy, especially, especially in cell isolation and activations. We have the Dynabeads that are developed by our Dynal group in uh, Norway. Uh, I'll talk about Lenti, electroporation and gene editing later. Um, in a catalog and media, we have a lot of solutions such as, you know, Gipco media, human serum replacements, growth factors, and single use technology. Uh, again, I'll talk a little bit about this and then um, many products also in, in wash and feel and as well as characterization. So, also at Thermo Fisher, because it's a cell therapy product, because it needs to be in the clinic and it needs to be pharmaceutical, we wanted to add an extra stamp of quality onto our product. And what we define as, and we call those products cell therapy system. So those products are basically not only the GMP, but there's some extra uh, testing and documentations as well as export support to really guarantee the highest quality, the highest regulatory uh, material and documentations that goes with those products. So you can actually take them directly to the clinic. And that's very important. In the past, we used to make research products and then try to get them to GMP level. Now we're really adding this, this feature to all of our cell therapy products which means you can really use them from research to clinic. And that's very important. And there's a lot of our product that we call CTS. So first, let me tell you a little bit about 
isolation and activations uh, product that we have. I'll go very quickly. Uh, there's a lot of contents. If you want more detailed information, we can, we'll be happy to send you some data, but maybe the most famous product we have are the are beads, CD3, CD28, which allow you to isolate T cells as well as grow T cells. And um, those beads um, are used in more than 88 clinical trials. So they are already using in clinics. And then recently, the Novartis announcements, when they announced they were FDA approved for their first CAR T therapy, they're actually using our beads. So we, you see our products uh, with the CTS stamps are already in a clinic, and they're very widely used and available for research as well for clinic. Uh, along with this, we have the Dynamag magnets, which is the magnets uh, for large scale um, uh, isolations of the cells after Dynabeads binding. Um, and here's some data around those, the cells not only allow you to activate and grow T cells, but also allow you to isolate T cells uh, with those CD3, CD28 beads. This team in Dino not only work on CD3, CD28, they also work on other type of T cells like Treg and, and other cells, and, and there's a lot of programming developments. There's a, a lot of also custom work that can be done when you have a specific antibodies or a target you want to go after, we can actually design um, a beads that will do this. And, and they work very well and they're very uh, widely used in the field of T-cell therapy. Now, before I go to the engineering, I want to talk a little bit about cell expansions. And so to expand immune cells, we basically have two media that we offer. One is called the M5 CTS media. Uh, this is the first defined serum-free media. It's used uh, for a lot of immune cells like NK cells, T cells, dendritic cells, uh, and, and also already uh, FDA 510K clear device. So it's kind of already approved in the, in the system. Um, that's kind of the older version. The newer version that we designed is called the CTS optimizer T cells. So this, cell, this media is actually widely used for T cell expansion specifically. It allows you to grow T cells without serum. So you avoid all the problems that come with serum. Human serum is variable, is expensive, and it's hard to, to source it. So Optimizer allow you to use this without serum. Uh, and we also design an immune cell serum replacement in which you don't need to buy serum. This is actually a, 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 um, a xenofree supplement to replace human serum. So all these solutions allow you to kind of stay chemically defined, xenofree, uh, and again, all those products are CTS, meaning they are GMP, there's extra regulatory and support to really provide um, the best solution for your cell therapy. Now, those media works very well. They allow expansions of T cells as well as if you use a human serum. Um, they also can be transduced, transduced very well with lentiviruses. But maybe the most compelling data was published by Kite. So Kite Pharmaceutical is a company, uh, it's a cell therapy company based in, Ca in California, in Los Angeles, that was actually recently bought by Gilead for $12 billion. So they do a lot of T-cell therapy work, and they actually published this data in which they use CTS optimizer with a serum replacement. So showing that uh, you can use our media without serum and still have a very fast growth, the best growth of T-cells, uh, in seven days process, um, you know, um, sh showing the, the, the impact of this system. And really, Optimizer with the serum replacement is really the best system. It's fully defined. It can be used and being used in many clinical trials. So if you grow T cell, I strongly recommend to use this media. We also have cytokines and growth factors. Uh, so I won't spend too much time on this size, but we see, you see we have a lot of... Uh, IL-2, IL-4, IL-7, a lot of growth factors that uh, are needed to the growth of the UT cells. We, if you, so we have the media, M5 optimizer, but we also do a lot of custom media. You know, some customers don't want phenol red, they want additions, different, different kind of flavor of media. And so we have a whole group that actually can customize everything. Uh, from a full service to a consultation to a panel where we can send you diff 24 media, for example, that you can test and then uh, design. And most importantly, we could also manufacture a very large scales under GMP uh, conditions. So really kind of a, offering a lot of customizations there. We also have a lot of customization into the formats, you know, 
Um, we, we have many companies that produce bags, single-use bags, so we can provide those media already in the bags at 5 liters, 10 liters, or smaller bottles. I mean, all kind of different formats uh, can be available to you. So you simply get the bag, plug it in, and you can go your tea cells growing this way. So a lot of options and a lot of customizations uh, for your tea cell needs grow. Now, let me focus a little bit about some new product we designed for cell engineering. How do you engineer those T cells uh, to be the most efficient, especially for CAR T and NK? So T cells or NK cells are actually very hard to transfect. You cannot use a product like lipofectamine. It won't work very well. You need to use a virus. And typically, people use lentivirus. And what lentivirus do, they, tra they transduce very well the T cells. And they also introduce the piece of the, the, the CAR T transgene inside the genome. So it's not only transductions, but also insertion into the genome. So those T cells express CAR T for a long time. So when they're injecting in the body of a human, uh, they stay there for months. And by being there in months, they can recognize and, and target the cancer cells and kill them. So you need to make a lot of lentiviruses. Now, to make a lentiviral virus, lentivirus, you need first to have, it's a transient transfection process, meaning you can, there's no stable cell line expressing viruses because it's toxic. Some packaging uh, protein are toxic for the cells. So you must do a transient transfection every time. What you need to transfect, you need to transfect three plasmid. So three pla packaging plasmid, each code for different um, uh, viral protein. And then you have the gene of interest, which is what gene you want to put inside the virus. You do a transfection step into, into a packaging cell lines. And this packaging cell lines is to typically a two and three cells, so kidney, human kidney cells. And so after transfections, the plasmid express the viral protein, the RNA transcript, and they get formed into a lentiviral particles that then bud, bud out of the cells and then you are very purified and you have lentiviruses. So you see a very complex process. It's a transfection process, a packaging cells, and you, there's a lot of culture. Now, one of the challenges, a lot of the system are adherent, meaning the cells, the two and three cells, are growing at the bottom of the dish on the adherent system. So if you do a small scale research, it's okay. You use a little petri dish and you can grow and have a lot of virus. But you can imagine if you need really large scales, it's very inconvenient because suddenly you need to use T cell factory, a lot of plastics, and walking incubators, and you're dealing with a lot of large equipment and large volume um, that is really not efficient for the scales that we need for T cell therapy. Also, those, those media contain serum. We eat serum can produce a problem uh, into the, the quality of your product or the regulatory of your product. Now, Interestingly, there's already some of our products that are being used for this um, lentiviral productions, such as Lipofectamine 2000, for example, is being used right now by a CMO to produce clinical grade lentiviruses uh, that you use in clinical programs. So there's already some of our product in, in this workflow. But what we wanted to do, we re really wanted to improve the vector productions to reduce the cost, to make it scalable, and to make a GMP. So, so I'll focus on vector production, but one word about vector construction. So to make your vectors, we have a company called GeneArt, which is a gene synthesis company. They can actually do all your cloning uh, and all your need and vector needs for this. Downstream of this, we also have another group called Capture Selects and Poros would actually develop vector purification affinity resins that allow you to quickly isolate AAV or LV onto uh, an affinity resin. Where my group is focusing is really here in the middle where we wanted to improve vector productions. So you could go two ways, improve the adherent culture or change completely to a suspension culture, which is a lot more easy to use and scalable. But before, I just want to say one word about adherent culture. So people that produce lentiviruses, typically they use, so they do adherent system and they use a cheap transfection regions called PEI. PI is a polymer that allows you to do transfections. But here in this application notes, we show that you can still use the adherent culture, but if you swap your transfection reagents from PI to 2000 or even lipofectamine 3000, you actually achieve a lot better transfection efficiency and a lot higher titers. 
So even, so maybe you do not want to change your system. You still want to work in adherent cells. You can simply swap the transfection regions and get better titers. And we have an application notes uh, on this. But really what we wanted to do with this product called Gibco LVMAX is develop a suspension solutions. So you can actually do have the highest titer to reduce the cost, but also scale it and, and GMP manufacturing to really produce a lot of quantity. And so about two years ago, we started this program to really identify the best solutions, design the best product for lentivirus productions. And the way we attack this, we wanted to have the best cells, the best transfection reagents, the best enhancer and the best supplements, and really kind of design them together and optimize together to really produce the highest titer. Now, we develop a system that have very high titers. We can achieve one to 10 to the eight TU per ml, which is really high. This is unconcentrated. Typically, people achieve 10 to the six. So we like two lugs better. It's scalable because it's a suspension system. Everything is in suspension. So you can go from flask to bioreactors. So you could, in theory, go 200 liters, 500 liters, I mean, very large quantity. And all the product ultimately will be GMP with the CTS stamp. So they will be all uh, under high quality. So you can actually use in a clinic. And then we use a lot of design of experiments that allow us to test all kinds of variables. And so the, the, for this work, what we've done is we've done a lot of screening of many, many cell lines, many enhancer, many transfection reagents. We've done everything in 96 well plates because those plates allow you to do many factors and variables uh, very quickly. And then once we identify each component of this kit, we then move to larger format, 30 ml flask, 400 ml flask. And now we're developing protocol for bioreactors, wave bioreactors, or our finesse rockers to really be able to lower scales. The titers I'm going to show you were functional titers in which we take the, the supernatant of the media and do transductions on cells um, and, lo and look at the GFP cells by flow cytometry. So it's, it's functional, which is really kind of give you a better title, if, ideas of the, the quality of the lentivore prep. So let me walk you each component of the system. So this is a system that has cells, transfections, and, and, and media. Uh, so the cells are here. You can see they grow very fast, and they also grow in very high density. You can achieve 12 million per mil of those cells and still remain very variable. So it's important to have cells that grow fast, then suspensions do not aggregate and grow systems. So we isolate, we tested many, many cell lines and really find those cells to be the best. So once you have the cells, you then need to optimize the supplements. And the supplements is a system that allow you to control the growth. If you, if, you, if you let the cells grow too fast, they're actually spending a lot of time growing and multiplying. They don't spend time producing what you want them to produce. So you need to slow the cells down enough so they can actually spend time producing the lentiviral, but not slow them too much, then they, otherwise they die. And so here we use the supplements, and you can see we can use a 1%, 5%, 10% of the supplement, and we could affect the growth of those cells. So here, if they grow too fast, you actually don't produce that, you produce tight LV, but not as well. If you slow them down just enough, you can actually ex achieve maximum production of LV. If you slow them down too much, then you affect the performance and you lose too much. So it's really finding the right balance to really slow down the cells just enough so they can produce lentiviruses. And then, so we have the cells, the media supplement. The next step is be improving the transfection reagents. You know, suspension cells are a little bit more difficult to transfect. So we needed to screen a new reagent that allowed to transfect those cells very well. So uh, in vitrogen, we, uh, you know, had a lot of transfection reagents. We been making transfection reagents since 1987. So we have a large library of compounds, so we screen a lot of compounds to really find the best transfection reagents. And here you can see many candidates that we have. This is our control, and we found you know, a new transfection reagent that works really well. So we screen many transfection, we pick the best one, 
and we, that's what we put in the system in the kit that we have. So sales, supplement, transfections. Uh, we also spend a lot of time optimizing the protocol of transfections. For example, we need to understand how long you can incubate the transfection in optimum. Uh, here you see optimum time is really two to four minutes. If you incubate too long, you lose effic efficacy. How long you can incubate the DNA into optimum? You see this is more stable. Um, I'll, the complex as table this is so there's a lot of optimization of the protocol to really maximize performance and and so there's a lot of details here and the work that we've done to really provide the best protocol possible and answer is actually hand answers are strategy you can use to improve the release of lentiviruses by the cells and so there's a lot of molecules you can use and we so we screen many many molecules we did a massive screening and you can see here we have a lot of candidates and screening a lot better than a control. And so here we screen, we pick the best one, and we put in the kits. And so really, and then again, we also look at the time of additions, when is the best time to add to the cells. Uh, for example, we see the optimum is you know within four hours to 16 hours. This is where you want to add this and answers to have the best effects. So not only are we finding the best enhancer, but also the best protocol on how to use this. Um, and so we try to make it convenient so you can uh, easily use and, and um, make it simple for you. So here's what the protocol would look like. For example, at day zero, you would see the cells at 3 million per mil, which is pretty fairly high density. The next day, after the cells multiply, you add the supplement. So the next day, you slow down the cells. Then you do a transfection with DNA and LVMAX transfection reagents. Uh, after 10 minutes, you add the complex to the cells. And then after five to six hours, you add the enhancers. So you slow down the cells, do a transfection, add the enhancers. And then the next day, you harvest at 48 to 55 hours. And then you perform a titers. So very simple protocol, very quick, um, and, and achieve the maximum results. And this is kind of the evolution of this program. So we're actually starting this work two years ago, and, and we've done a lot of testing and prototyping. So here, prototype zero is we would take cells, media from different places and assemble, and you know you get some LV, but through optimizations of each components and the protocol optimizations, we can now achieve incredible titers. We can achieve five to six, 10 to the eight, uh, undiluted. So imagine you can actually have now 10 to 100 times more viruses, which really reduce the cost by a lot. Um, and, then, and, and now allow you to do cell therapy work. Now, what's also important is this is not one reagent. It's not just a cell line, it's a system. Meaning this kit, the system contains cell lines, transfection reagents, supplement, and media, and an answer. And it's important to use them all together. Here this is an example when we swap things. You know, for example, we are, we provide the LV293 cells. If you swap to other cells like 293 freestyles, you're gonna lose a lot of activities. The transfection region is important. A lot of people want to use PI because they think it's cheaper, which it is cheaper, but it actually affects the, the production by a lot. So even though the transfection region is cheaper, the cost of producing LV is actually a lot higher because it's not as good. And then it's important to use the supplement and answer. You, should, you see if you remove them, you're gonna lose a lot of activity there compared to. So it's really a system and it's this is where you're gonna achieve the best results. Now what's important is you can actually, if you do research and you need to make a lot of different lentiviruses, you could use this kit into a 96 well plate. So you could do a lot of LV, small scales and have really good titers. But you could also take this kit all the way to the clinic, all the way to large scales. So it's the same product going from research to clinic, and you see no loss of activity in terms of titers. We are now developing bioreactor protocol. So we have the two liter protocol with the finesse uh, bioreactors, and now we're working on larger, like 50 liters and 200 liters uh, for large scales. So if you're interested by those protocol, we'll be, we'll be happy to share it with you. 
And again, what's important is LVMAX, Gipco LVMAX, you can, is the product you can take from research to clinic. Because we can do small scales, large scales, you could do screen many, many lentiviruses and screen a lot of different car con construct and do cell lysis, they say. Um, but you could also use the same kit to do preclinical work, so larger scale, and then you can use in clinical settings where you could really do mass productions and and really kind of automations ecosystem. And that's the idea. Is really take I have the kit that goes from research to clinic. Now, it's also really the goal of this product was to reduce the cost of lentiviruses. People tell us when they develop T cell therapy. 40% of their cost is coming from the production of lentiviruses. And that's unacceptable. We need to reduce this so more people can have access of this therapy. Um, we can expand it and, you know, and, and really kind of give access to this incredible ter therapy that, that really curing cancer and leukemic, for example, and leukemia. And here's showing that, you know, a lot of people think PEI is cheaper, which it is. But notice that because you have a lot less activity, a lot less viruses, sometimes 10 to 15 times more, you ended up spending a lot more money because you're using an optimized system. And it's easy to imagine if you need to do 100 liter tanks to produce LV. If you use PI, you need 100 liters. If you use LV Max system, you use 10 liters. So you use 10 times less volume, um, reducing the cost by at least 50, 58%. So it's, it's really kind of economically advantageous. So again, this is a kit. In the in the kit comes a media supplement, a density cells, transfection, and answer. Uh, there's multiple protocols you can use for commercials. And so right now we develop for lentiviruses, but if we get a lot of questions, can, can I use this for AAV? And the answer is yes, you can use for AAV, although it hasn't been fully optimized for AAV. So there's still more work to be done, but at least it's, it's compatible with AAV production. So again, this is what the kit would look like. You see there's a vial of cells, there's a supplement, the transfections, and, and really everything comes together. We have a starter kit that, that comes with the cells and media to really get you started. Um, and, and what's important about this product is it's scalable, is animal origin free, there's no serum in there, and a lot of the media, for example, are already GMP, but we're working on a GMP version that will be available next year. Um, so right now it's the research kit that we're launching, but the, the clinical version will be available next year. It comes so you can purchase just the cells and the media, or we recommend the starter kit. So the starter kit gets you everything you need to get started, the cells, the media, transfection reagents, and answers. And then we also sell a transfection reagent by itself that comes with the reagents, transfection reagents, the supplement, and the enhancers to increase the production of your LVs. And it's available now. Now, what's really rewarding in this program is we develop this in-house, and then we release it, and we have a lot of beta testing program. Beta testing is when we give early access to customers to this product, and the feedback has been incredible. I mean, people love this product. They see so much better improvement than when they've done. And this is some testimonial from customer. And they said the LVMAX system cannot come fast enough. This gives us more room for optimizations. Uh, they have such high titers. They can now really kind of uh, optimize their system. It's easy to use and save space because they don't need to do big tank anymore. They can actually do a lot smaller volumes. And we hear this feedback time and time. So. Um, really, really positive feedback on this product, which is really exciting for us. Now, so that's lentiviruses, and you know, please reach out to us if you're interested in hearing more about this product, and it's available now. What I'd like to talk about is really kind of where we see the future. So lentiviruses are using now, and that's what we need, but in the future we think that they're going to need to be able to use new gene, gene editing approaches. Right now, a lot of, like I showed before, it's an autologous system. You have a patient, you take the T cells, you do, you transform the T cells, you put them back. In the future, you're going to want to have a donor, one donor that gives T cells for many other patients. It's a lot cheaper economically. You can manufacture at one site. But to be able to do this, you're going to need to knock out genes 
spe specifically T, T, T cell receptor, so that donor can actually give this T cell to other patients. Otherwise, they get rejected and there's a problem. So to do this, you must do gene editing. You must knock out the TCR gene so it can be received. Lentiviruses cannot be used for gene editing. They can only insert the DNA, but they really cannot be used for gene editing. So we think the future is around being able to use those gene editing approaches in T cells, because not only they allow you to do it knockouts, but you could also knock in, you can insert the gene at a safe locus, um, and, um, and, and, and the limitation in netiviruses is mostly the cost, the insert size, and you can do gene editing. So we want to kind of prepare for this, and, and develop new system. But the key question is, can you do the same level of efficiency with a non-viral approach? Can you do the same result that LV does with a gene editing? And it's not easy. Lentiviruses transduce T cells at about 20 to 40%. So we need to be able to do the same thing, gene editing and not can. And so we spent, in my group, we spent a lot of time developing new system. It start with electroporation. So you cannot use lipovictamine, but electroporation works actually really well in T cells. And this is our neon electroporation device here. And you can see at day three T cells, uh, we can achieve 80% transfection efficiency in those cells. So it works really well. What's nice about this neon platform is you can optimize many, many factors, like the pulse size, the pulse number. Uh, many pl other platforms do not offer this flexibility. Uh, here we can really optimize the cell density, everything. So give us the best results. Um, so you need electroporation, which is the delivery system. But now you also need the gene editing tools. And we have a lot of gene editing tools. So we have the Talon, Talon nucleosides, but we also have CRISPR-Cas9 format. And CRISPR-Cas9 come in many flavors. So we have the protein version, the mRNA version or the DNA versions, depending on what you want to do. We also have lenti array, lentiviral libraries, um, Cas9 or uh, the whole library. We also just recently released some true guide, synthetic guide RNA. So in the past, you have to do in vitro transcriptions. Now you can just get them synthetically and they're ready to use and they work really well. For primary T cells, which are hard to work with, we really recommend to use the RNP format, the protein version, and the guide. And we're actually going to release in Korea very soon is the new Cas9 protein V2, which is an even better protein and giving incredible results. So let me show you some of the results that we have. So first we wanted to do gene editing in primary T cells. So to get a primary T cells, uh, we usually use a, a leukopack, which is a product from, from human, and then we use our dynal beads, T cell isolate, to isolate them and to activate them. So we use those beads. We do a transfections using our Cas9 protein with true guide, guide RNA in the presence of neon. And then we could analyze many different ways. We can analyze the cleavage by next gen sequencing with our ion PGM. We could also do flow cytometry to look at knockout. So we have a lot of tools there to really do the workflow. And we're getting incredible results. This is an example of a gene editing in primary T cells. So what you're looking here is the indel, person indel efficiency or the person functional knockouts. So either you look at the DNA level, the cleavage, or you look if the protein's gone. This is using four different guides, targeting TCR receptor track T1 or another TCR receptors. And notice that we, we can observe incredible indel uh, formations up to 90%. If you have a optimized guide RNA, we can see 90% cleavage efficiency. And if you look at the protein level, we can achieve 99% loss of the protein. So it's really using those new tools, Cas9 and gene editing, we get incredible knockouts. And you can see here in the flow, um, this is normal cells. And then uh, when we knock out, you see everything shifted to the left. Basically, the, the, the TCR receptor is gone. So you completely knock out. So, so the first step is achieved. You, have, you could have a T cell from a donor. You can knock out completely TCR receptors. Then the next step is you need to knock in to put inside the chimeric antigen receptors so those T cells can express for a long time the receptor. And so we, we've been working a lot on this. So typically, T 
to have really good knock-in, a lot of people use AAV6 as a donor DNA. You know, when, the, when you provide the donor DNA as a virus, you get a lot better efficiency. You can get 40%. But you're really not fixing the problem because now instead of moving from lenti to uh, non-viral, you still need to produce AAV6. And what, what we really want is, is a complete non-viral system where you would use plasmid DNA with guides, Cas9 protein and guide, and achieve really good knock-in. And in this case, you don't need lentiviruses, you can use all electroporation. But, but how do you achieve this? So there's already papers published showing, especially by the, the Jennifer Doudner team, showing that using the neon in primary T cells, they can actually achieve 25% knock-in efficiency. So they're already getting good efficiency in primary T cells using primary T cell, the Cas9 protein, and a small insert. Uh, so this, this, you know, it's already being done, but it's still small inserts, and you want to kind of be able to in, introduce larger inserts like CAR T. There's another paper showing again using neon in HSCs, the same thing. You can actually knock out very efficiently, uh, even do a, some insertion at the sites, and it's already working really well. What we want to do in a group is really kind of improve the efficiency uh, even further to be able to actually give introduce a large piece of DNA, like CAR T, you know, insert, which is about two to three KB uh, inside the genome. And so what I can tell you is right now, uh, this is a work in progress. So we have a lot of options here, but we can achieve using a, a plasmid DNA with our new Cas9 protein, with our new true guide, we are already achieving 20 to 30% knock-in. So optimizing knock-in and using some secret ingredients, uh, we're getting incredible results. So we think this is where the field is going, this is where we're going to go, uh, but we are uh, very nice uh, options here. And so this is my last slide. So again, some, you know, kind of showing you all the different options we have around isolations, media. I mean, we really have everything you need. If you want to get into CAR T, NK, uh, we have a lot of solutions from A to Z, not just the growing media, but the beads, the way to engineer, and I forgot to mention, we also have a lot of equipments, like the shakers, the, the all the incubators, really kind of a complete solution to really get you started, as well as a lot of product in the characterizations uh, space. And so I'll stop right here. Um, um, we can take any questions. Uh, if you want to learn more, please go on our website, thermofisher.com slash lentiviral, uh, and then we'll be happy to help you out. Thank you very much.